You are watching UCAP News, the weekend edition. Good evening, thank you for joining us. Aaron, a very exciting night last night for all the Cowboys in the local region. They were at the PBR event. Yeah, the PBR was here in town last night at the exhibition grounds, and there's a ton on the line for a lot of those riders, you know, especially with the year wrapping up. So I'll have more on that coming up a bit later on in sports. Awesome. And, you know, although the rain has passed, sun came out, it was a bit chilly out there today. It not, was. Not summer weather. No, it Cold. wasn't. Yes, it was in those winds that gusted up to about 39 kilometers yeah. throughout the region, but the sun did make an appearance. It did. So that's that's all good as we take a look now across the Lloydminster region in the city. We're sitting at 13 degrees and those winds are still gusting out of the east southeast at 13 kilometers per hour. As we take a look at the Lakeland and Battlefords under mostly cloudy skies and 11 degrees for Lakeland and 12 for the Battleford. So if you're wondering, is the sun going to return and those temperatures warm up? Well, you're going to have to stay tuned because I'll have your full weather forecast coming up a little later on. Moving on to elections in the border city, even before the official release of the Saskatchewan party's platform, our MLA is campaigning hard to win your votes. Tim McMillan, joined by family, friends and locals, held a picnic at Colonial Park for a meet and greet in a casual atmosphere. Although not available to review the details of his party's platform today, Tim McMillan outlined issues that have been and still are a focus for the Saskatchewan party in the next election. Paying down debt has been something that's very, very important to our government. Um, infrastructure spending on hospitals and schools and roads is something that uh, we think in the past four years has been very important and I think in the next four will be. Hoping to earn the votes from his constituency again, McMillan stated that his party has been meeting all the goals they had set out in the past. Four years ago, we laid out over 100 promises. And uh, I'm proud to stand here today and say four years later, we have accomplished almost everything we said we would do. An example of a promise kept, McMillan points out their positive contribution to health care issues in the province. In the last campaign, we said 800 new nurses is something the Saskatchewan needs and we're going to set that goal. Today, we've hired over 900 additional new nurses. And McMillan says the voice and concerns of the community is most important to how they shape their platform. Since being elected last time, talking with, hearing from and meeting with constituents uh, has really framed the way we operate, the way I operate as an MLA and the way our government, what I take to the table. Well, there's a new club in town mimicking a time from the Wild West where men and women were not scared to shoot a gun. The Border Cowboy Mounted Shooter Association hosted the finals this weekend. Shauna Rakshad has more. Or I guess they all have to wear them, I was correct, so thank you. Shooting a gun is part of the excitement for some local cowboys and cowgirls. Like I said, it's time to vent. Ten, ten balloons you get to shoot, ten, you got ten shells to shoot it with, and yeah, it's a lot of adrenaline. This group came together just over two years ago with others across Alberta, Saskatchewan and British Columbia. Sixteen members make up this local club and take part in clinics to become better shooters. With us, trained us how to shoot off our horses and yeah and ever since then we've been Duncan has just set practicing up and down shooting there. and it's been a heck of a lot of fun. Joining the club this summer and participating in her second competition Jackie Oliver encourages anyone looking for something different to do this is the sport to try. It, it's fun it's a good sport for anybody to you know come give it a try uh, we're always welcome to new members to come check things out. Not only a steady hand and a fast moving horse is required, wearing attire from that time period is part of the dress code. If you get to wear a skirt and blouse, you do not have to wear a hat and you do not have to wear shafts. So in the summertime, that's a really big advantage when it's really hot out. This weekend's competition is the last on the circuit before the finals, hopefully with some representation from the Lloydminster area. There's shoots all over throughout the summer. Like this is kind of like the final one because in two weeks the Worlds is going on in Amarillo, Texas, which is going to be a good shoot. World Finals in Texas. Shauna Roshik, New Cap News. Uh, we're going to take a quick break from news right now. Our instructor joins us with some sports, and you're going to have some details about PBR last night. Yeah, you know, it was one of those things where the year is wrapping up. Everybody is trying to make their, you know, collect the last points just so they can make it into the Canadian finals. So, you know, it was one of those nights, a lot of pressure on the riders. The dirt was kicking up last night at the Lloyd Exhibition Grounds as the PBR Canadian Cup Series was in town. The professional bull riders were holding on for dear life as there was a lot at stake with the Pro Tour winding down and the Canadian Finals right, right around the corner. Go, yeah. go, 
It was a packed house. It uh, looks like everybody shut the tractors off and the combines off and headed into town tonight. This is the first time I've ever been to Lloyd Minister and they just packed that place and it's a pretty cool atmosphere in here. For a couple of riders sitting on the fence, the points up for grabs were critical to their season. Guys like Zane and Dusty do what they got to do to to become a, a contender for a Canadian championship. Tyler, Tyler might be pressuring up a little bit tonight, and you know he fell off a bull that Tyler would ride in his sleep. So you know what? That's that's what happens at the end of the year. You know that's how champions are become champions. So. Great genetics. This young man was 87 points earlier this year. Holding on to a 2,500 pound bull for eight seconds isn't easy by any means. It's kind of a wild deal. I got on a pretty good bull tonight and I just uh, went down on the inside of the spin and the bull just kind of ran the length of me after and as you can see, I'm a little dirty from it. For riders already knowing their fate, they just want to finish strong. Well, I got one more bull riding left in Dawson Creek, so hopefully to win that one, I'm hoping to make the World Finals in Vegas, so it'll be real close if I make those. So would have been nice to do something tonight, but that's uh, part of the sport, I guess. The puck dropped on the Lloyd Minster Baker Hughes Bobcat season yesterday in, in St. Albert. The Cats couldn't get one by the Raiders, falling five and five, falling rather five nothing. So this afternoon in their home opener, the Orange and Black were looking to notch their first Geno to go with their first win. But it's the Rangers who strike first, less than a minute in. Cats turn the puck over in their own zone. Trevor Poirier slips it into the back of the net. Fort Sask up one nothing. The Cats respond a minute later. Ryan Ranchier. Carries it into the Ranger zone, lets it rip. The weak wrister fools Troy Tremblay. We're tied at once. Five minutes later, the Rangers retake their lead. Five on four off the draw. Jackson Young fires it on net. He tickles the twine. 2-1 Fort Sask. They extend their lead before the first is out. Kyle Campbell in on the two-on-one. Beauty toe drag. Then lifts it top Ched. Rangers up 3-1 after 20 minutes. In the second, they keep it coming. 4-1 Fort Sask off the draw. Bo Gieslinger picks up the loose puck. His shot is stopped, but Dylan Stang jams it home. 5-1 Rangers. The Cats try to claw their way back. On the power play, tic-tac-toe. Tyler Bush sets up Brody Pollard in front. He makes no mistake. It's 5-2, but that's as close as they would get. 7-4 is the final. The Universal Heat started their season yesterday with a W, slipping by the St. Albert Sabres 2-1. The Heat were back on the ice this afternoon in Fort Saskatchewan, but unfortunately I don't have a final to report at this moment. The Lakeland soccer programs came into today going in opposite directions. The women shut out in three straight, while the men winners of two in a row. The Lady Rustlers scoring woes continued this afternoon. The Trojans blanked Lakeland 3-0. The Goose Eggs extends their goalless drought to four games. As for the guys, they stayed undefeated in their last four with a 1-1 draw against Sate this afternoon. The Rustlers will close out the ACAC regular season in two weeks' time with a pair of home games. And that's your final look at sports for tonight. There's still more news and weather still to come.